you so much, ma'am. Thank you. So uh, this topic is an outcome of a positive trend in tourism and hospitality sector. That is a rise in the number of women entrepreneurs. Reasonably, certain factors have propelled this trend, such as government support, stepping up women education, the surging desire for economic independence, nature of the industry, and so on. We all know that tourism uh, plays a crucial role in generating employment opportunities. It contributes to GDP. It encourages socio-cultural preservation, among others. But you will be surprised to know that tourism has another superpower. That is, the majority of its workforce is female. Despite this superpower, can you recall the names of some prominent women entrepreneurs or women leaders in the industry? I bet no. So before you Google it out, I would like to welcome four incredibly talented ladies from both academic and industrial backgrounds who have contributed significantly to redesigning the view of women entrepreneurship in the tourism and hospitality sector. So I would like to take this opportunity to give a brief introduction of our panelists to the audience. We have with us uh, Dr. Madhu Chandok, who is State President, Delhi Hospitality and Tourism Council in Wiki, that is Women's Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. She is also the co-founder of PIP 2020, along with its director, Branch Development and Product Enhancement. She is a stalwart in the field of hospitality in the region where she has contributed more than 35 years of diverse experience in leading projects. Before co-founding her company, Dr. Madhu has spearheaded the openings of over a dozen successful hotels with Bharat Hotels, currently the Kulalit Group. So Dr. Madhu is extremely passionate about interiors, FEE, HOE, and she champions functionality and purpose of design. We have next with us Dr. Shiva Hamid, who is Professor, Coordinator, and Training and Placement Officer of Master's Program in Tourism at Aligarh Muslim University. She was also a visiting faculty at the University of Goa. Recently, she has been appointed as a member of the National Rural Tourism Council at Wiki. She has featured amongst the 100 Muslim women of Uttar Pradesh in the Achieving Academic Excellence segment by RBTC. So RBTC is rising beyond the ceiling. It is an initiative to shine a spotlight on Indian Muslim women, their leadership and contributions in India. Besides this, Professor Shiva leads an active corporate and social life. She is a keen traveler, connoisseur of literature, culture, art, cuisine and costumes. We have next with us uh, Ms. Rajshri Bhargava, who is State President, Punjab Rural Tourism Council, Wiki. She's an academic and travel entrepreneur with a passion for developing sustainable tourism in India, focusing on Punjab. She's an assistant professor with Chandigarh University and managing director of Geranos Getaways, which is a boutique firm that specializes in promoting cultural and rural tourism in Punjab. Ms. Rajshri has a patent to her credit, credit also, and she has received several recognition, specifically cultural walk in National Heritage Walk Contest organized by Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, and the India City Walk in January 2021 for promoting Punjab heritage and rural tourism. We have our last and the final panelist, Ms. Sonia Singh, who is the co-founder of Nippon Tayo Hospitality, which is a DMC that handles Japan-related assistance. She's also a council member in Wiki's Delhi chapter. Ms. Sonia is a Delhi University graduate and holds an advanced diploma in travel and tourism from South Delhi Polytechnic for Women, New Delhi. She holds certification in Harvard Managed Mentor through IATA and completed her MBA from the Institute of Chartered Financial Analysts of India. She is also certified from CVENS, which helps in giving event-related solutions and helps you understand the current trends in technology related to event management. Her motto in life is explore, evolve, and experiment. So on behalf of our audience and the organizing team, I extend a very warm welcome to all the panelists, and I now invite Dr. Sara Hussain, Head of Department and Conference Chair, to welcome our panelists. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Pinas. And Dr. Madhu Chandok, Professor Shiva Hamid, Ms. Rashi Bhargav, Ms. Sonia Singh, a very good evening and a warm welcome to this plenary session, uh, which is one of the most awaited panel discussions of the conference. 
and I wish to thank my fellow Wiki Council members for joining us today. Uh, as Pinaz has already told you, Wiki stands for National Business Chamber for Women. Uh, Wiki actually stands for Women's India Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Wiki boosts and builds women's entrepreneurship and business businesses through greater engagement with government institutions, global trade and networks. And we at Jamia Milia Islamia believe in a, in a very inclusive, inclusive environment. And issues of women are very, very close to our outreach efforts. Uh, the, the university is currently being led by two very strong and able women leaders of our times. Uh, Dr. Najma Heptullah is the chancellor and Professor Najma Akhtar is the vice chancellor of our university. Uh, and while planning for this conference, it was our endeavor to ensure issues of women entrepreneurs were also discussed. Uh, the voices and concerns of women entrepreneurs needs a forum. And in the recent years, we've seen number of women entrepreneurs rise. And so much so that some studies have suggested that after COVID struck us, there were many households where only women entrepreneurs were the sole breadwinners for their family, as their partners had already lost their jobs. So, so here we shall speak about the whole world as sisters beyond borders, um, in a she for she spirit and looking at she economy. So over to you, Pinas. She is a senior research fellow at our department and moderator for this highly anticipated panel discussion. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your words of wisdom. Now we can uh, open the panel and we can have opening remarks from um, Dr. Madhu. Over to you, Dr. Madhu. Good evening, everyone. And I thank everyone on board and all the participants for giving this opportunity to share some thoughts. And as the topic suggests, you know, entrepreneurship, if we were to even look at the word entrepreneurship, it is something that adds value to an economy of any country. It could be our country, it could be even the global economy. On the other hand, how does a woman today contribute? Now, if we look at women, we are all here and I myself am a woman, Dr. Sara, Pinas, you know, and, and all of us, we feel that somewhere down the line, I think a woman has the ability to balance out between the economic part and the emotional part. So when a woman comes out to do a business, she balances out both the parts and brings to the table looking at the emotional connect, taking care of the other person around the globe and also somebody who is part of the whole initiative that she is making. So entrepreneurship, as far as a woman led entrepreneurship is concerned, it definitely is much more successful and pandemic has also given us a lot of boost for people to even come out. A woman today is and let's not just talk about us who are part of this city life. There are a lot of women in the rural part who actually are not there or maybe are much able than us in terms of their abilities, but have not found the roadmap to come out of that whole rut where they are sitting from morning till evening, just taking care of their homes. So here comes an opportunity of successful women entrepreneurs which even Pinaz mentioned and even uh, Dr. Sara mentioned that there are so many coming up, but they are like unsung heroines. You know, I say we talk about unsung heroes. They are unsung heroines which are lying. And it's like, um, as I always say, it is like something, it's like a jewelry which somebody needs to really find and just buff it to shine and show them the path. So that's the way that I see on women entrepreneurship come and I can actually quote a little bit of a story of my own self when I started my journey. It is way back in 82, 83 as a woman and being the elder in the family, I wanted to go out of country and gain some knowledge and come back and, you know, just establish my career path in this country. And my own family was at that time not 100% in agreement. But who stood by me was by my mom and who stood by my mom was my grandmother. 
So just see how a woman can empower another woman. She fought with the family and made sure that I went to Germany. I took my training, came back and, you know, worked. So my sister, my youngest sister, who was five years old, she said, I'll become a pilot and she became one. So I'm just saying, and that's again, my mother pushing. So what we need to understand that a woman can push a woman much more and should do that to uplift them. But I have been very fortunate that I've had a lot of support from men. I have worked in an organization where I had about 35 men and I was probably the only women in the, in the department initially till I formed my team. And the men also need to support women. So I think it all starts from our own homes where we need to educate each other and I think a woman needs to also start respecting her own self. Once she starts respecting her own self, she can find the way that she has dreams to fulfill or a vision where she wants to reach. Now, if I want to just talk about hospitality as such, which has been my almost, I will be completing next month four decades in the industry. So it's almost 40 years that I have been in the industry and there have been a lot of learnings. Even I, when I started my journey, about say 10 years after when I introspected my own journey, I was feeling that, you know, I was like a doormat because a lot of people came and used me as a resource. But then I told myself, you know, how do I grow up? How can I actually get to another level where people, I can also do what I want to do. So these are the things that we need to actually have confidence in us. And a woman needs to also, when she starts doing, and there are so many opportunities. If we were to talk about hospitality, there is a housekeeping department. Somebody, a woman working in housekeeping, she does not need to just be a chambermaid all her life. Once she's in a housekeeping, she should also aspire and learn to grow. Tomorrow she could become an entrepreneur. She could actually become someone who has knowledge of linen. She could just be marketing linen for a company. She could be doing, uh, say, accessories, you know, or also amenities, artwork. There's so much that comes out of your learning in the hospitality industry. And what I always say to everyone and also all women, men, all of us have to work hand in hand is that life is like a staircase. And if we were to see the design of a staircase, you climb about five, six steps and you have a mid landing and then you go up. So it's very important that we all grasp, learn and then establish and stabilize ourselves and move to the next. And this is my actually I mentoring to many students and I tell them, I said, you are in a mad rush. You want to just climb an escalator or you want to take a ramp. But the chances of coming back to your original position, if you are into that pace, is much more. So patience is another very big thing that we all need to have when we want to take that route of becoming an entrepreneur and start doing things. Uh, this is something that I also learned the hard way. Even I initially in my journey was not so patient as I am today, but we are, we should ready to learn from each other. It's like a mentoring each other, train the trainer program so that you learn from successful entrepreneurs and also learn through their success journey to make your own success. So this is something that I feel in hospitality, a lot from the FNB background, a woman by nature, I think is an entrepreneur because when you are in your kitchen and cooking for your family, you are not following a recipe. Every day, your mother paneer will taste very differently, you know, because today you say, okay, let me just put something this. So that innovation is inbuilt in each one of us. And I think we should recognize that and we should uplift each other. Also try and uplift the other women who are part of us or who we can actually motivate to bring up and that's what we are trying to act push in this industry so and also since i am part of the academics as well and to many of my students today and i can give you one example one of my students from ocld she is in chennai and i was mentioning the other day when we were discussing internally and she found a whole 
in the household elderly people and she said they need a lot of support sometimes their children are not in town they are abroad how do they sustain themselves so about three four of them came together girls and they opened a small uh, company of their own and they will actually are on a call for them so whether they need cleaning in their homes whether they need a diet plan whether they need uh, uh, electrical repairs whether they need housekeeping anything that they need so she's from a housekeeping background but then they've started this and i think very soon they will be very successful as well because they have to be patient so from from my that's what i would say from my end about women in entrepreneur uh, women who actually want to become an entrepreneur need to have confidence in themselves which is so important have to be patient have to be collaborative i think if you do not open to collaboration with others if you say it's my way or highway it will never work you have to work as a team when i used to do projects you know and all of us we have to work with our teams together because together we can actually become much more stronger so that's right. what my thought process is on that that's but totally true thank you so much so. for uh, highlighting the fact that behind every successful woman there are many women possibly that starts from your home and um, that's thank you ma'am uh, now we can move uh, forward to uh, professor shiba ma'am you can have uh, give your opening remarks very good evening to all of you and what a brilliant start uh, by dr madhu chandok and before i present my views dr madhu you can see that i have a staircase as my background and yes. that somehow shows that we are in sync with each other's thoughts and let me begin by saying that uh, entrepreneurship is a very fascinating word but i am more fascinated by what rajshri calls herself a travel preneur so i will dwell upon that that we are strictly going to you know talk about travel entrepreneurship in this session and uh, we all know that there is no second thought about it that women are increasingly getting educated today they are on the path to be uh, to get more and more awareness today and they urge for economic independence and to some extent government support is also there as compared to the past let us say 10 years from now however the performance of women entrepreneurs in terms of profits market share contribution and sustainability is not very encouraging so the urge is there but the performance is still missing because there are various reasons to it that can be a whole uh, you know big story in its own self that what are the reasons for all these things but this uh, the, the, these figures do you know tell us that the market share is almost negligible which is being uh, owned by travel entrepreneurs or let us say entrepreneurs in general also and that could be due to lack of uh, awareness as contradicted to the fact as i said just now that the women women are becoming increasingly aware now but if they becoming aware now it will take some years before we can find some more entrepreneurs successful entrepreneurs you know in the picture and just uh, you know around one hour back i was uh, trying to find out a list of travel entrepreneurs of female travel entrepreneurs in india and uh, to my utter surprise i uh, got you know a list of 20 a list of 10 you know successful women entrepreneurs in india and if you looked at the older lists you did not find any travel entrepreneurs in it it is only very recently that we have noticed that travel entrepreneurs have come up and they are all based on digital technology their work is based on digital technology and let me tell you one more very interesting but very discouraging fact that all of these five to six women that i have just read about they are young and uh, but they do not have a degree in tourism so somewhere because i come from academics i wish to point out at the fact that tourism education in terms of entrepreneurship and other related areas have to be focused upon by the government by the universities by the educational institutions because that is the breeding ground of professionals universities and educational institutions are the breeding ground of professionals and here is the place that we need to begin this 
and drill this and make them understand the concept and the application and the implementation of entrepreneurship. We'll discuss later how can we do it. And there are certain gender centric factors also that cannot be, I cannot say no to it that there are no gender centric factors. There are, and there is lack of internal and external support and you know cooperation that, that is always there with women folk. And there's one more point which I want to take lift from here is that entrepreneurship has emerged as a necessity in pre uh, in you know during and post COVID times. We all have learned that we need to have a backup apart from you know our jobs and you know our monthly incomes, but we have to be prepared for such calamities also. Uh, as we began that entrepreneurship and more so, even more so travelpreneurship is not a very common choice amongst women. And with whatever entrepreneurs we have in amongst women, we find that either they are from very affluent families, they have family run businesses, their fathers, brothers, others in the family have already established the business and they come and join at a senior position and they enjoy that. That is also very nice that they should come up and join their family businesses. The female touch should be there. Then there is a lot of educated women who are qualified. They have degrees, they have ideas, they have brains, uh, but they do not have the money. So they look for financial support, for government support, etc., and they wish to start enterprises. This number is also has started becoming visible now. Then there are gen generally people, uh, women who start out of need. That means uh, some are like uh, solo women or widows, etc., who need to start an enterprise or you know start a commission-based business to earn you know bread for their family. And uh, there are some uh, women who have whose who children have grown up. Uh, they are middle class or upper middle class women. And uh, so they, they wish to go into something which is like uh, a commission based business, which does not, uh, you know, call for much of work or much of time investment and still, earn, um, you know, get them some pocket money. So these are the various reasons because of which the women are there in the entrepreneurship scenario today. So the real reason behind it is that there is a need for women entrepreneurs owing to the gender centric factors also that we need more women entrepreneurs, that kind of a link is missing in the entire scene. And uh, then I want to, I, I was uh, talking to you about the, uh, the women entrepreneurs that I found. So I, I just found about, you know, the very first name that emerges there is Priya Paul. That is the chairperson of Park Hotels. And then Sukhmani Singh, uh, who has, uh, uh, you know, established uh, Sikh Sherpa. Then Jayanti Rajgopalan, who is the founder of Detours India. Then there is Pia Bose, who is the founder of Girls on the Go Club. And then there is Chitra Gurgani, who is the co-founder at Thrillophilia. All these are very highly educated people who have earned degrees from abroad or higher educational institutions in India and have established, but if you read their stories, you will find that there is, you know, either they have started with their husbands uh, or, you know, some male member of the family or something like that. But I still cease to see a story which is in travelpreneurship, which is entirely uh, a woman uh, established empire or women established any digital solution company or something like that. So in that way, what I can say is whatever the panel discussion is aimed at today, I uh, will not, uh, you know, hesitate in saying that we are looking into nowhere right now. And we have to start from the scratch. So it has to be, a, you know, an octopus kind of a, approach where, you know, uh, we, we have to start in the, uh, in the, you know, start educating about entrepreneurship, then assisting, you know, plans, policies, then, you know, the industry and the academia should come forward, handhold and spread awareness, think of schemes, advise the ministry. We have to bring together all the forums so that this issue can be discussed 
uh, solutions, possible solutions can be found and can be framed and then put into action uh, uh, with each other. And then sh they should be made available for the general public, whether uh, they are students, they are looking for loans, they are looking for expertise, etc. So this is uh, my, uh, you know, uh, opinion about women entrepreneurship and tourism and hospitality. Over to you, Pinaz. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for uh, highlighting the fact that, uh, yes, there are certain disparities in the state of women entrepreneurship in India. Uh, there are women entrepreneurs, but definitely uh, to, an, to an extent, they haven't, you know, built a kingdom that possibly we can see in cosmetics. You know, a lot of women have earned a mark but that's still a long uh, journey in case of uh, tourism and hospitality. So thank you, ma'am. Um, now we'll move forward to uh, the next uh, panelist, Ms. Rajshri Bhargava. So uh, you can give your uh, opening remarks, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Sara, ma'am. Thank you, Pinas, for uh, inviting us. So I'm really uh, very much uh, appreciate uh, Madhu ma'ams and Shiva ma'ams and especially Shiva ma'am for calling me that word uh, travel and entrepreneur and encouraging me. So if you see, I am as a homemaker and uh, I'm before I got married a little early. So I was working with the Usha Shiram Groves in Delhi in uh, before marriage. Then. Uh, then married to an army officer, then there was no IT, nothing because I was in IT sector and there was nothing. So we keep moving, going to the various places, take up the teaching. But uh, in 2009, again, met an accident. Uh, so my shoulder is still badly trashed in 2010. My wrist is gone. So right hand is basically for a math teacher makes a lot of important thing for math and physics. So I have to teach, uh, leave the teaching. And when we, my husband move out from that army. So again, uh, I had to take up something. There was not much social life in the corporate world. So then I was looking something and uh, as a passion, I've always been a traveler. We loved the complete part of India, except we have not been to Gujarat and Northeast. Rest of the part, especially the countryside, because most of the army cantonments are the near the uh, some village far away from the meddling crowd of city or any town or something. So we are for the resources like our maid, our people, we are dependent on the local by villages. So we are interacting with these, these people. Secondly, the most of the soldiers, they are coming across India and we have the Punjabi, we have Keralite, we have Tamilian, we have uh, all kind of community in our uh, uh, soldiers community. So we are all Indians. So we, that time we are celebrating all the festivals, all the fun, all the games and the food, everything we are having. So in uh, that 24 years of life from the army, I really enjoyed each and everything. And especially Punjab, when we stayed in the rural area, we made our Mitti Kagar. Three years we stayed over there. So it was something experience which I really felt on me or this was the reason I came out with this project in the once we are back in Punjab and settled down here in Chandigarh. So we are coming out with the idea to living the same, that culture, ruler experiences and we what the fun we had, we, we want to share with others. So as you see, women, tourism and hospitality are the closely connected. Women have a genetic configuration that makes them perfect host and a planner. Tourism and hospitality sector is recognized as one of the important contributor to the help creating new jobs, to the, especially for the women. Globally, in the tourism industry, 46% of the workforce are women. Women are coming open to the business arena with the idea to small, start small and the medium enterprises. They are willing to be inspired by the role models and the experience of the other business women who are confident, creative, and innovative. We as women look for the economic independence individually at the same time, generating some income or some independence for the other women as well. Women across the country running travel agency, hotel, 
shops, homestays, boutiques, and others um, like uh, restaurants with the local cuisine, it really make us feel proud. The way they are coming in their professional uh, competencies. So if you see, women entrepreneurs are the, like Shiba ma'am already said, affluent women, self-employed, ruler women. They are the two other factors which making them the pull factor and the push factor. Pull factor, I put look like ladies or women like me who has started with they have that emptiness. The children are well settled. Husband are busy with a good job and we have the education and we want to make our own identity some way. Or we want to be being the not regular, not doing the household job and just living a life. We want to have our own setup, our own desire to prove ourselves somewhere. And the push factor, obviously, when there's some difficulty in the family, the woman is there. Like if you see in the Lijat Papad in 1959, it, when it was started, it was just started by the eight women. They want to live life dig with the dignity. Today we can see this cottage industry in a big empire. And the same time, they're just not doing that business or they are not just helping the ladies. They are developing the complete community. They are by the UNESCO, they are doing the women education program for the child care, health in the improvement programs and everything. So one small effort by the eight women in such a long time back, it's really made the complete industry. So what we as an educated woman, we can do a lot many things for the others. And now we come to the, see the ruler entrepreneurs, that new things is coming up and the, woman, the government is also trying very hard to promote these all ruler entrepreneurs. These ruler entrepreneurs don't have the much of the resources, not have the much of the skills. Whatever they are getting, they are getting enough. They are not very keen and very desirous to scale up the things. Like in the, if you see, uh, most of the pro problem is coming, the financially this thing, but whatever the resources are there, they are also doing to taking up the things in their businesses and all. So if you see in the rural area, it is very difficult to connect to the urban. So our aim as a wiki, unlike in Punjab, we are trying to connect to the urban area to the rural area. Not directly right now due to the pandemic, we are not able to travel. But of course, so after a year or so, we are going to be getting over with this, all that problem. So now uh, next thing is comes in our mind is the uh, factors that driving the woman to start business, to join work workforce are the way. First thing is the passion. A just 23 years old girl, Anuva Kakkar, she has started the Tingle, one brand called Coco. And she has started with the with the, her studies. Like we have the lot of students are there who must be listening. And she started one of the Coco powder, hot chocolate. And the, before going to her classes, she used to give the some of the metro station. And while connecting, she is collecting her money. So she, she was working very hard. But in the pandemic time, she was not able to do it. So what she was thinking, she is not earning much after putting so much of effort. So what she did in the two years of time, she did her research. She ordered 50 kind of uh, uh, cocoa uh, seeds from the all over the places and she uh, tried at home and she found which is the best one. She finally chose one from the Chennai, which have the organic farming. So her startup, she is now she has prepared the powder and she is sending on you know, the uh, direct selling the products and it's in a few years, in the two years, it's really scale up like anything. And another thing, ki what she is giving, she is giving the best of the uh, people of the organic farmers who have the, doesn't have the big uh, like market kind, kind of thing, but a small girl age of 23, she has a passion to do something and which really helping the society and environment as well. So now this first thing is there. Then second is the recognition as I already saw. Okay, I just want some recognition for myself. If my children are growing up, husband is busy. I have the qualification. I want to utilize it somewhere. And why not the, I can do the something for my other people, for the women who are also with me the way I can help them. Then next is uh, sometime fulfill the unmet de demand. Sometime we want to like uh, Tejas Fulikar. She has been to abroad and she stayed in the some of the heritage home and all. And in 2013 and 14, she started the vacation homes. 
so there's so many like chandigarh place that uh, parents are living alone in the big forties and all so they have some uh, palaces or havelis in the rajasthan they have they are left empty in the goa maharashtra and those places she has reached to the women and told them hey, why don't you host and that they are offering the luxurious home for the people so this kind of vacation this kind of innovation really helping the women without going out outside to their houses next is coming to the uh, education as we have already discussed so now is coming to the major challenges faced by the women that is the first thing the social norm and patriarchal views on the role of women because we know ki what is the role of actually women women should cook home food look after the family look after the in-laws and this thing so no this is the basic norm of the family so we all are going through this phase and next is the getting the funds and loans because the banks they generally feel that women we are giving the loan they are the risk risk uh, that their customers are the uh, they might their role loan may not be come back so this is the very important thing that we should really work and i am sure government is also working for these uh, uh, financial aids and all but uh, as a woman entrepreneur i am not able to very, very much truly really found out ki these are the things are feasible for me and go for it because husband already having a loan actually because of some house and the family and education so uh, if i want a loan where should i take the collateral loan for something next thing is coming up that network uh, we women are not having a business network thanks to the social media now on the linkedin through the facebook we are the one who are getting connected and during the pandemic time i could see the many of the women got the good uh, business opportunity and uh, scale, scale up their business so as in i see that these are the very important thing that we all are we must use the social media marketing properly and if we don't know we should be good good enough to use the social media especially facebook which is going facebook whatsapp and uh, instagram which is really helpful especially for the tra- travel entrepreneurs because these are the experiences until unless we make them feel realize ki what we are offering them it's and their people's experience this is going to be really helpful and our startup garenos get well, this is a responsible travel i believe the benefit of women in tourism are diverse for the tourists as well as local community across the globe women are seen as a keeper of culture they are cook the weavers the growers and the homemakers and the gateway of traditions and the stories and by involving these women as a tour guide making a different itineraries and uh, and the storytelling as a heritage walk leaders we are able to view a destination and with a different perspective so i hope in the today's session we are going to come out with many of the obviously we know the challenges we know the issues definitely we will be looking forward some opportunity to discuss as well thank you so much naz we can't hear you sorry yeah um, am i audible now Um, yes, yes, yeah, okay. yes. Uh, so yeah, beautifully, you know, correlating the women entrepreneurship topic with push and pull factors, and telling us that yes, genetically or maybe naturally, women are, you know, good hosts. So there is a lot of potential in this particular sector for uh, women leaders to come up, and I'm very sure that this panel is going to be an eye opener for a lot of us. So uh, coming to the last uh, panelist, Sonia Singh, uh, I would request you to please uh, give your opening remarks. thank you so much finas um uh, good evening everyone i hope everyone is keeping healthy and safe at this point of time thank you so much firstly for inviting on this panel discussion uh you know to start with what mrs madhu chandok said that you know one woman actually uplifts the other woman for me personally this path was actually shown by mrs madhu chandok whom i have known for so many years and uh, she's she's been part of my journey from the day one when i actually started into the travel and tourism industry you know i will put it that way um I've been in the industry for more than like 15 years now, and I've handled different types of travelers, 
uh, from a corporate travel perspective to handling groups to student movements, everything. I mean, you tell the type of uh, traveler and I can tell you, yes, we have, I have done that. So, and uh, I've, I've worked with all uh, different brand, travel brands, MNCs, uh, which actually gave, gave me a lot of exposure to the travel and tourism industry. Uh, having said that, um, and you know, spending more than a decade in the industry, uh, there were a lot of things uh, that would actually make me think that whether I should start my own thing or not. And uh, it would be very hesitant at times. My father used to say, you know, why don't you start your own thing? And I used to be a little hesitant. No, no, no. You know, this is not my cup of tea. I would rather be happy with the nine to five job. I'm happy doing that coming, uh, you know, having a fixed salary. And that is what I'm actually looking at. But then uh, pandemic hit. And that is when it actually made me think that, you know, no, now I really need to think and do things differently. And that is how I stepped into the journey of entrepreneurship. Now, for many, this, uh, uh, you know, for me, if you ask me on a personal level, entrepreneurship has been a risky business for me. It was like, okay, you know, if I get into this, I will need to have a lot of investments. I need to have a lot of resources to manage everything. Uh, at the same time, I also knew somewhere that, yes, it is a rewarding thing. Uh, it will obviously help me grow. It will always uh, push me to do innovations. It will also help me, you know, economically. Uh, it also helps you to have self-confidence. And also, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur, there is no age bar. You can start an entrepreneurship journey at any age. And we have seen uh, ladies, you know, not only in pandemic, but even in past, who are as young as 20 year old have started. And even someone who's 60 plus has also started a journey as an entrepreneur. So there is no age bar in this. Uh, starting about my journey, like when in 2020, October, uh, the pandemic hit and, uh, you know, the company that we were working, they asked us, you know, they had decided overnight to shut down the department. And that is what actually made us to think that what different we can do. And this is where um, the idea stuck to me that, you know, it's it's actually time to start entrepreneur journey. And I, along with my colleague, Sharad, um, who's also a co-founder in the same company, we thought of uh, putting this into a vision, um, our passion to promote Japan as a destination. And that is how this company, Nippon Tayo Hospitality, was actually created. Uh, you know, we've been, uh, when I used to handle with the customers, we used to deal with a lot of concerns and issues that a travel agent would face in handling a particular destination. And at the same time, we felt that there was a lot of gap in terms of learning about the destination, understanding the destination. So uh, with our own personal experience, we thought, you know, why not try and fill this void and um, help the travel agents, um, help the community, you know, to understand the destination and see how uh, we could improve things. And uh, that is where we, we thought of uh, imparting knowledge to the industry. And within the company, we created different uh, divisions. So one was, why not have a DMC part, which would actually help connect from a B2B segment point of view. The second was having a representation wherein we bring in companies from Japan to India. And we are currently representing three of these companies, uh, two are city councils, and one is actually a motor to Japan, which ex uh, expertises in the biking uh, uh, tools in Japan. So we've brought in this and we're trying to educate people that what all things can be done. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also started a social media awareness about the destination. So it is not that, uh, that only certain people are going to be educated, but we are trying to reach each and every people. And you'll be surprised to know that during pandemic, we've seen a lot of small agencies which have been started by women. And you know, they, they've changed their focus. So if they were promoting a certain destination, now they want to promote other destination and they need those kind of trainings and all. And that is where we are trying to help them, uh, you know, through our virtual presence, uh, be it on social media or through LinkedIn. And uh, uh, we, we are uh, trying to see how further we can connect in uh, promoting this particular uh, thing. As far as uh, the current trend for entrepreneurship is concerned in the travel industry, you know, many women who have been currently um, helping or have been part of the travel business have been involved in a typical family run businesses. You know, at one point of time, they've dedicated the full time, uh, but due to personal pressure, they've actually given up on the professional life. So this still continues to exist till date. And uh, what happens is that for a woman entrepreneurship, it still is a nightmare. 
you know, there'll be a lot of hindrances, like there'll be a poor awareness about the startup plans. Uh, there's limited access to finance resources, lack of mentoring, and practical experiences, networking, confidence, and other uh, social and communal problems. So I think uh, all those things have to be tapped in for a woman to be pushed into an entrepreneur journey. And it, it starts not only uh, at a particular age, I think the moment they start studying, a little awareness if they are trained or they are communicated, you know, how they can actually plan going ahead, it would really help them. I'm sorry, Pinaz, I can't hear you. Okay, uh, am I audible now? Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you so much, Sonia, uh, for, uh, you know, coming out of your comfort zone because we can see a woman leader in you and uh, I think that is going to be an inspiration for a lot of women out there. So, uh, I would like to ask you, why a Japanese DMC? I mean, why not some other fancy destination DMC, say Mauritius or Maldives? What, what was your connection with Japan? So, um, you know, apparently when I visited Japan in about 2014, I was very fascinated by that particular place. So, and uh, I was lucky enough to go to that particular country very frequently. So, I, I kind of understood what was happening on ground and how I could actually coordinate and discuss with people minutely, you know, each and every detail. So, uh, and when this pandemic happened, I, I couldn't think of any other thing. It would mean that actually I'm starting from scratch, but why not work on something that I already know? And that is why I started through this particular destination only. Okay. Plus there's been a lot of uh, Japanese influence in India right now. So, you know, you'll see a lot of companies, Japanese companies making investments in India and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of moments happening in terms of anime, in terms of education, if you talk about uh, even the national skill labor uh, uh, that we talk about, they are also working closely with the Japanese government to enhance certain projects. Uh, there's a bullet train project which is again going on. So there's a lot of things happening in the Indo-Japan side, bilateral agreement also. Wow, that's great. I think we are all going to visit Japan very soon yeah. after <laughs> listening to her. So uh, I think there is this another side of Dr. Madhu. You started your company in 2013-14 uh, at the time when, uh, you know, women entrepreneurship was not much of a positive trend. We have started seeing it now. But back seven years, eight years back, it was not. So what was your motivation to start this company? Uh, having had an experience of working with an owner for almost 27 years, and then with a hospitality brand for five years, we felt that there was a big hole between an understanding of an owner of a hospitality brand. And if you... I don't want to talk much. I can go on and on and talk about hospitality, but I would say, you know, even in a hospitality brand, there are three segments. It's like an entry level hotel, a mid segment hotel and a luxury segment. Now, the education and, and I always believe, I think I will be educating myself till the last day and till my last breath. And I think that's something which again, I want to quote my mom because I'm so inspired by another woman. And she always says, she says, Madhu, Education is a jewelry that nobody can rob you of. So I think that's something that really made my, and that's something on top of my mind. So I always felt, okay, let's now try and educate owners, try and help them save their money, which sometimes they didn't even understand where they were putting. So if a designer told them, okay, put the money here uh, and, you know, not save. And then tomorrow when they came to a guest touch and feel items, they were, they had no money left. So then they said, ma'am, yeah, laminate, we'll just put a laminate. You know, why do you want a veneer? Why would you want a wood finish? Let's put something pre-finished. So this is the hole that we found. And we said, okay, let's just come. And, the, and I have two men as founding partners. And right. we've been working together, you know, all three of us. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm just going to touch wood. You know, we've had such a good, fine relationship that, you know, we respect each other. We are there. So when he, when in fact, sometimes when my partners, they take me for a meeting, they said, ma'am, agli bar aapko nahi leke jayenge. He says, you tell the owners so much, why will they hire us? They will not hire us because you have given them all information when you are meeting them. So I have also learned the hard way. And I think, and as an entrepreneur, and when you are, have been on the other side and you want to give back so much, 
and when you are business it has to make business sense and i, I totally agree with chiba you know if economics doesn't work business doesn't work you know so you need to really bring that business factor into whatever you are doing from an entrepreneurship point of view and i think i wouldn't say we have been very successful but we've had some successful projects that much i can say you know as 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 a company we might not have reached a 100 crore margin or something we are a very small boutique firm but i think wherever we worked the owners have really appreciated our transparency so it's always better even in an entrepreneurship to be very transparent it's important to trust your stakeholders and learn from your stakeholders you know and if i am say a design firm who are my stakeholders my vendors from where i'm procuring my materials and i want to see a life cycle analysis of materials whether the material that i'm specifying is the right material or not so i think all that actually just thought that there was this education hole to be filled which we are still finding you know which we are still challenged to have good owners who can understand right. but we're trying our best and i'm sure uh, with the support uh, things will be better i am very sure ma'am with this um, you know consultancy you are adding value to the society so much and the term education is coming up again and uh, so professor shiva have you ever you know encountered any student who a uh, women student who possibly want to be an entrepreneur or who comes up to you with an idea ma'am i have an idea i want to discuss has has it ever happened with you happens so much girls think they fantasize <laughs> and then they forget they want to do so many things while they are in the classroom right they want to do so many things when they are in college only when till the time they have to dream so the girls have to come out from the dream world face the reality you know take the gun in the hand and be ready to shoot so aspirations i say they die out because what happens is life hits upon girls that's a fact that cannot all of us have been hit by it just when the time comes that you are you know you've finished your education and it's time to start a career uh, you know the marriage the wedding bell starts ringing the family life has to begin then come children and that's that's an absolutely necessary part of life so this gap which occurs in a woman's life will either make her too complacent with what she has and as rajshri was saying that she started having empty nest syndrome that is the time when most of the women realize that they should have thought about themselves and should have you know had a career of their own but at that time it is too late so they end up doing something small just to get some pocket money during the afternoon siesta time so they go unnoticed as dr madhu had pointed out doing very you know doing jobs which are not of uh, importance not to be noticed nobody knows who is she so mm-hmm. aspirations have to be sustained even if there is a break or let me say a kind of a, a comma in the life let that comma not become a full stop it should just be a small comma you have to girls have to sacrifice those years otherwise you know by the time you are 35 40 the biological clock is ticking and uh, again you know you have everything by the time you have 45 but you don't have a family that's bad too <laughs> so that's a tough choice so what i believe is that they should get educated they should start small and when the family demands time they should give it but there should be a time limit till what time am i supposed to be devoting myself 100% and you have to draw a line somewhere that now i am available 70% now i am available 60% now 50 now 30 and now only 10% because my career has to ga- gain predominance now and one should not women should not get out of touch of their line if they are in academics if they are in entrepreneurship if they are you know doing the job they should not get out of touch because out of seen is out of mind out of sight is out of mind and see we all are so worried that what's going to happen you know once the covid is settled down because we have got used to working from home 
although we say every day it's so bad it's so bad but when it actually comes down that we have to get out you know get back to the offline system again we'll have a problem the same happens with women so that comma has to be dealt with you know with a lot of patience and let the aspiration you know burn inside you that you are waiting for that time when you can hit back with vengeance you know that that spring that you know the spring is there and you know that is suppressed for some time and then you know finally when it takes you know it springs very high you know it goes very high that is the kind of aspiration i term as aspiration so i don't know what actually girls carry in their mind and uh, you know they start fantasizing pre wedding shoots and things like that and forget career in you know in this short term you know uh, dream world so if you ask me aspirations i'll say not more than 20 25% they're more interested in getting a job as sonia just told us that even she being into the private uh, sector for so, such a long time did not think if uh, the think of entrepreneurship unless covid hit she was complacent with a 9 to 5 job and never thought of entrepreneurship even though she has spent 15 years in the corporate sector so leave alone the girls in the college so something has to be done about it you know yeah. right in the universities right in the colleges that this is your cup of tea you can make it and let mm -hmm. them feel that they can carry that you know burden or not even burden they, they can carry it beautifully on their shoulders so exactly. aspirations are low in True. terms of entrepreneurship so that, that a burning is, uh, desire that burning desire to be an entrepreneur can't you know cannot be substituted or should not be substituted with pre wedding shoots or something like that so uh, so before we you know move forward to discuss the challenges that you know women leaders and entrepreneurs face i would like to ask a question like uh, it's a common question to everyone have you ever felt you know little advantages of being the women entrepreneur or being a women leader in any of the segment because i think uh, for instance dr madhu's entrepreneurial journey has been relatively smooth so have you ever felt uh, you know okay it was uh, some kind of benefit and was it it was all this stuff if you, if you ask me okay please please go ahead please go ahead dr madhu please go ahead yeah you no, take i was lead. just saying that you know uh, i don't think so our journey is smooth you know i'll be very frank it's basically i always say life is an ecg machine it will never be a straight line you know if if it's a straight line you are dead so so i would say that there are times when people have respected and regarded because you are a woman mm -hmm. and people across the table have done that on the other hand you know sometimes they say okay you know why don't you send bine you know who's my partner so maybe we'll discuss it with him so there are some things that they don't even want to open out with you because they want to probably use a foul language in communicating that sort of dispute which might mm -hmm. come in because every business has some disputes and some things to sort out so sometimes people don't open up with women and then they want to have so i think that's something which sometimes gets you a little disturbing but i think what is good is what i am noticing that in today's time and world i think men are starting to understand that they, they cannot take women for granted anymore they need to respect women i think that's what i feel is very important in our country we need to under, and that is where i think as parents it's and who have sons at home they need to educate their sons much more at home so that when they grow up they also respect everyone you know we always had a society which didn't have women as a welcoming child in the family as well you know beti padhao beti bachao so many things coming from the government's initiatives but i think on ground responsibility lies on each one of us so even even if there are initiatives by the government who is there to run those initiatives na as a society we all need to contribute our bit to run to that Uh, madhu ma'am i am completely agree with you ki we have to teach our son because uh, by both the son i'm elder one is 28 and younger one is 
so both are the strong pillar they fight with my husband at times you know mama needs this so yeah. i say for my business starting up as because uh, since um, uh, i was like mathematic graduate so when i started my journey for this uh, new because i'm not know what able to teach so i have to look for something and uh, once we left the army he was working with the indian school of business and uh, luckily i got an opportunity to, to organize international conferences and during that time i got an opportunity to make the travel arrangements and they wanted to know about india because most of the foreign uh, tourists this uh, delegates were coming and that people i am handling those people so in the punjab as well and then hyderabad also so this is the time when i thought ki i should start my own something so when the people are coming they should they should see the real india they wanted to know more about other than the going to the tourist places and all so this is what when i went for the like line of the that's mba tourism and hospitality i took my post graduation in that one and my son and me both uh, graduated at the same year uh, <laughs> age of 45 so i think age is no bar shiva ma'am uh, if that passion is there if uh, somebody really wanted to do so age is nothing like um, sonia has already said ki in entrepreneurship there is a no bar and mm-hmm. after the 5 years of teaching and 6 years of teaching along with the teaching i start this startup i gone through the major three four surgeries last in 2009 to till last year i had two surgery but nothing is stopping me and because these people all the three like husband and the both the son they are stood behind me and they are really helping me so i really appreciate your th- thoughts definitely Thank i you think so much. it just starts from home and nobody's home. journey That's what. is uh, nobody's journey is is easy but i think it's if you are a women entrepreneur it becomes a little harder so coming to the challenges um i would request all of you uh, the panelists to according to you which one is the major challenge for women of the not just one challenge so each one of you can start um, we can start from sonia you can uh, list one challenge that from your journey you have faced so um like i said the social and communal uh, uh, you know uh, reasons is one of the thing you'll see uh, men you know there'll be a gender equality you'll see there'll be a salary disparity also and uh, having said that the most important thing is uh, you know at times you have women who are actually criticizing women and pulling them down so these are some common things that you will actually see into the corporate world happening so some kind of social taboo is there plus uh, sometimes women pulling women down is one yes. challenge that sonia faced uh, so dr madhu what was your challenge See what I feel sometimes it's the unconscious sort of biasness that we don't understand at all. You know, it's not consciously. As as a person, I might say, okay, you know, she is good looking, so she may be very intelligent. On the other hand, the other girl is not very good looking. Maybe his kato shakal nii achi, so I mean, she won't even know, you know, how to do this. So it's like that, you know, the judgmental approach about a woman. from this whether we like it or not our mind works much faster in unconscious mind than in conscious mind so that is why that actually super power so i think that sometimes when even i in meetings you know in my journey i can quote you know when i was just learning i would say in my few years earlier years 10 years i used to be sitting in a meeting and i would raise a point and say okay no this has this should be done in my opinion that way and then people would say no no we will think about it and after 15 20 minutes it comes from a man the same thing but worded differently oh very good point what is it you he is actually you know so i think that's something which was disturbing and this was this a little bit of challenging at that time but then you learned to you know at least understand that you know that's what it is but i feel it's changing today and i think that we all can feel it has to change there is no two way about it i think we have to all be good human beings not a man or a woman you know if we are a good human being we will respect each other and if the women can succeed and be on the top why not my mentor is actually i also look upon indira gandhi you know who was who has ruled this country you know if you see you know some of her things to reach there and to represent the country at that time you know she really and mother teresa you know even if whatever she did from her own self 
so these are the women which really sometime rani jhansi you know so these are some of the historical women which really inspire you all the time and exactly. i'm watching this uh, serial also which is coming on television right now so this is also you know so i i am just saying that inspiration can come to you from anywhere mm -hmm. you know but exactly by my only thing is that we all have to learn not to be a man not to be a woman be a good human being i think this is this no book will teach you this exactly is, as, no. as we 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 indian say na our sanskar i think which are embedded in all of us exactly no degree can uh, you know teach you to be a good human being just be conscious and yeah. make sure that you don't have these unconscious biases in your mind which yeah. is and unconscious. believe believe in yourself yeah. you know and and have confidence Exactly. I think if you want to do something, you have to tell yourself you can do it. True, ma'am. You know, it's not that, and you shouldn't have the fear to fail, because if you won't fail, that's what they say also. Now there are so many sayings. You know, don't hesitate to fall down, but to fall down and get up, that's the energy that you should have. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So moving forward to Professor Shiva, uh, what was your your biggest challenge in in your journey that you felt? had challenges and challenges and challenges so i'm not able to decide which was the biggest challenge <laughs> but I'll, I'll i'll put it in a nutshell that if a woman is you know desires to be heard she desires to be taken seriously she has to work 10 times harder than the man in the same capacity to be able to command that position which means almost you have to rise to a flawless working style. You have to produce works sent to you, given to you in a flawless manner where nobody can point a finger. And that's, that's a Herculean task. That's mammoth task to be done. And why, why should a woman work 10 times harder than a you know, male counterpart to be able to attain that position? And still, even if you are able to do that in the best possible manner, you know, you are always termed as uh, haughty, arrogant, or she's self-centered because she likes to do her work on her own. Uh, so they never satisfy the people around, even if you wish to do something or try to do something flawlessly. So whether you are the best or you're the worst, the position is the same. That's the biggest challenge. Right. So be it academia or industry, some kind of inequalities are, you know, bound to happen when you are women. So uh, what was your challenge, Ms. Rajki? So basically, I got the degree. So education in the tourism hospitality knowledge is perfectly fine. I can use that. But when this comes to the financial and technology thing that I'm lagging behind, so most of the women, we are not very go through the financial things and lots of, we have to go through a lot of documentation. We have to fill ITR. We have to give that, uh, we are dependent on CA <laughs> to do everything. And once he tells you something, it takes time to understand what you have to do, right? The first thing, which I am really dependent on others. And secondly, technology, of course, uh, because the tourism hospitality now without technology, we cannot survive. So uh, thankfully that Neswam, Naptail, and that many of the platform which they are teaching the social media marketing and mm -hmm. uh, marketing strategy. I'm doing these courses, learning day by day, every time updating myself. So hopefully I will overcome by this. I did the project management course from I am Rotak also. So every year, it's just not the end of your learning. Learning has no age, nothing. So you are, you cannot be dependent on others. You don't look for that empowerment will, other will do it for you. It has to be done by yourself. Like, because I attended a lecture from uh, Bedi, uh, so Kiran Bedi, uh, she came, came to deliver a lecture in the Indian School of Business at uh, Hyderabad campus. And she said, give me ladies, look the excuses to come up and do something. We say, my mother is not saying, mother-in-law is saying, this is saying. It is you, you are finding the excuses. If you really want to do, come forward. Things will be coming there places itself. So this is what the two things, of course, we are lacking behind. We cannot have everything. 
so but we should work hard we should be to take the help from there and third thing from the tourism hospitality is students so because that it's a pandemic time i treat lot of students i try ki many of the students should come as a interns with the startup and they should learn the content writing photography videography whatever whichever area they are but i didn't find very encouraging numbers and not the students are not really putting that taking these, these things very seriously so i think students should work with the startup and they should gain the knowledge whatever the knowledge they can do because the coming time this digital era is not going to be there it will remain with us so digital will be there so we must work hard to learn that digital world thank you thank you rashmi ma'am i think uh, it's digital literacy is important financial literacy is important and sometimes if government has no skill development program for women entrepreneurs you need to yeah. take it in your own hands okay let's go and let's kill ourselves so uh, since we have you know time constraint i would like to ask this question to everyone so what one piece of advice you would like to give to young women entrepreneurs potential uh, women entrepreneurs so um, starting from you sonia possibly just one piece of advice okay um i think as as a woman you know when um, you want to start up you need to understand you need to have that self confidence you know um, it's it's like a super magic you have that self confidence you will believe in yourself you will uh, see all things coming into place you know uh, you'll be more positive you'll start curating on things you'll start you'll be more communicative and you'll be ready to conquer the world that's what i would like to put in that's great so dr madhu what one piece of advice you would like to give i would like to give one advice which i have learned through my journey as well and uh, you know which is that whenever you want to do something give enough time to plan and have a five year plan in place so a business plan to your journey is very very important because that will decide whether you will be able to succeed what is the kind of funds you need to have how much will be your outgoing are you sustainable enough you know it's you cannot mitigate the risk factor completely but then it just will give you actually confidence and even if you have to go to an investor tomorrow at least you have some figures to show them and i totally agree with uh, you know shiva also that i am also not a very good financial you know person and i am also trying to learn the hard way to learn a little bit but i think planning is the crux of success is my mantra that's great planning is definitely uh, is an important piece of advice so uh, over to you professor shiva ma'am what would you like to advise i would like to say that women have dual or you know role to play work and family both so generally what happens is you know you break under that pressure and you learn to or you know uh, just neglect your professional part and you concentrate more on your you know home front it's not that i do not love my home or i'm not a homemaker everybody is everybody loves their family but if you want to succeed in the outer world in the business environment focus has to be there the shifting of focus the percentage has to be decided and that's what uh, you know that's my advice if you stay focused you will succeed that's that's great ma'am that's great ma'am and over to you rashmi ma'am what piece of advice you would like to give mine is that ki adaptability adaptability Adapt new new strategy absolutely everything agree. whether it's coming to the supply chain whether it's coming to distribution channel is are coming to the strengthening your workforce you have to readapt the operations you have to re revise your financial model investing business development and uh, like whatever the strategies offered by the your know, financial aid is offered by the government you must utilize so adaptation is very much important for the any of the whether say entrepreneur as a woman or man anyone these has to be required so together we have got almost like four good pieces of advice self confidence is important planning is the crux success mantra 
Then we have be focused on your professional front and adaptability. So um, I would request uh, the participants if they have any questions from our panelists, they can put it in the chat box and we'll take your questions one by one. So we'll wait for uh, some questions if uh, any of the participant has. Naz, if you allow me, I have a couple of things to you know, add on over here. Definitely, ma'am. So, still the time you're getting a couple of questions. So, you know, adding on to what, uh, you know, we've just discussed today, I uh, I really liked what we just discussed that, you know, how women are supposed to prepare themselves, be more confident. I feel they also need to sharpen their axes or what we call sharpen the saw. After every couple of years or three years, please re rebuild your uh, you know uh, whether it is education whether it is your skill like uh, miss rashi was just talking about uh, you know i need to improve on my financial ability or my marketing digital marketing so we need to keep ourselves abreast we should not just get you know ek baar that we've learned we are, we are good enough that should not be there so every couple of years we have to you know brand ourselves rebrand ourselves have confidence and uh, we are uh, uh, one comment, this is one comment that I have, you know, what Madhu, uh, Dr. Madhu was saying that many a times women are, are not taken very uh, seriously just because of their certain looks. So whether the look is good or whether the look is bad, both the times it's a problem for women. If, mm -hmm. if, if she's good looking, if she likes to wear, wear makeup, she likes to dress up, then, you know, the society would say, you know, she's probably not mm -hmm. intelligent. And if the woman is not dressing up, is not that good looking, I mean, you know, so it let's not believe in the standards of the society. Women are free to wear, behave, do, look however they want to, and they have their voices. And today this forum is one such voice to allow women to be themselves and not mm -hmm. to feel themselves in any stigma about the society. So I'm sure there must be some questions. I was like, uh, I had these couple of things to add on, which I did. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad we had this panel discussion today. So, Pinaz, any to allow me? Uh, Sarah, if you allow me, I'd like to add to uh, whatever you have said. You have said just now. Looks matter, and sometimes they don't matter. You know, we have Sudha Murthy, such a simple, down-to-earth person. But when she speaks, nobody else speaks. So that is the kind of command on your work women should try to bring in through focus, through adaptability, you know, and through other things advised by the panelists over here. That's what I want to say. If somebody is good looking, let's not take it as a disadvantage. If somebody is not, you know, does not like to dress up, that should not be a disadvantage. But yes, we must live up to the needs of the times. That is also one thing we all need to remember. We sometimes we need to follow trends. Sometimes we need to, you know, go beyond the trends, and you know, go go beyond the ceiling. So that is my uh, advice right mm -hmm. now in continuation to what Sarah has said. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So we have got a couple of questions. Um, so uh, one question is: Does Wiki have specific strategies to promote women entrepreneurship in uh, rural areas? So, uh, any one of you can answer it. Uh, Iba ma'am, can I? Yeah, Rajshree. Yes, please. You are the best person to talk. Oh, actually, I'm working for the Punjab. So, basically, in the rural area, if you see that uh, we have the agritourism, we have the eco, we have the artisans, so we have the farm stays, home stays, and all these things. And uh, all collectively, we are calling it a responsible tourism also. So at that recently, Shiba ma'am and Shahana ma'am, which is national president, they have designed a uh, program for the buddy, green buddies for the responsible tourism. So we are, we are educating all the school children from the primary to do uh, secondary level, high secondary level. So they should know ki what is the responsible travel how, as a traveler, what they should do it. And the agri-tourism base, we are promoting uh, some of the activities uh, with the uh, local people. 
and teaching them if they have to handle uh, their guest what basic amenities they should have what kind of training should they should have in the we are going to the various farm stays and identifying their difficulties whether it is related to their um, uh, hotel operation like front office housekeeping or service area and these kind of thing and if they are finding any difficulty related to interior decorator or designing purpose we have the team of the interior decorator project manager architecture so they can help them and other than those with their social media strategies are also there which we are taking so they can make their social presence over there and there are many of the ladies who are already having the handicraft business and all those things so we are we have the wiki we have our own website where we are promoting their products and we are not taking like commission on any other thing any commission for those and we are some of places we are planning to organize the creative tourism sort of thing where they in a cultural tourism basically the people are coming and they are just watching that their culture and leaving but in some cases we wanted to promote uh, creative tourism the people are living over there for a six or seven days in the rural environment and they are learning uh, new techniques whether related to agriculture where related to like block printing fulkari tie and dye and so many arts culture of, across the india so this is how we are doing the activities and we are involving a lot of volunteers we are teaching about the waste management about the cleanliness hygiene a lot, lot many things along with that we are doing so shiva ma'am if you would like to add something just a little bit that uh, wiki has uh, you know national councils state councils and we have a very robust structure of uh, post holders and we believe in collaboration and you know collaborating with councils also so not just the rural tourism council but we have more than 160 plus councils on very on uh, uh, you know more than uh, 160 sectors so whatever the kind of uh, consultancy or this kind of a thing is required it is put forward and with collaboration from the respective uh, uh, you know uh, specialists that can be strategized but there is no fixed template or fixed strategy that can be given in you know uh, in a one stick approach that this applies to everyone or every problem that comes or every help that is required out of wiki so no one stick approach but a very robust structure to support any problem uh, and whenever a problem comes a solution is always there with the help of all the council members okay. that's, that's great uh, so we uh, we have another question uh, as in how to know the business is suitable for a women in tourism and hospitality industry is there any uh, say strategy or maybe something that we can say that this business is something suitable see one you need to know firstly whether you want to invest yourself in the travel and tourism industry or not you know how do you link yourself how, what is the kind of contribution you want to make to the industry that is one part of it uh, that you actually need to understand uh, see as as a uh, you know it may be possible that you may be a expert say for example into spa facilities you know so a lot of hotels and uh, uh, other things you can you can get yourself involved into spa treatment parlors etc uh, you can also get into hotels like uh, mrs chandok had the same kind of background in case you have uh, things to do differently you want to be a biker you want to you know uh, be a tour guide uh, there are a lot of options available but then you just need to think that what is suitable for you how you yourself right. want to contribute right so i think uh, sonia has answered your question uh, Ms. mr pradeep so coming to the end uh, in general we got to know that women definitely have an inborn talent to adapt understand and multitask and acquire skills which make them better business leaders whether it is tourism or tech fields women are leaving no stone unturned to ensure they are bridging this bias gap so this is indeed i think one of the most insightful panel discussion that we have had on behalf of everyone i would like to thank dr madhu chandu professor shiba ms rashri and ms sonia for spending your precious time with us and sharing your experiences it was indeed very beautiful i think the audience would agree that the session gave a major kick start to this 3 days conference that we are going to have 
So, as we call it a day, I would request um, all the panelists to kindly open uh, their camera so that we can take a group picture, virtual picture. All through the session, Dr. Nimit was not there. And when the picture comes, <laughs> Dr. Nimit is visible. <laughs> Welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I really like mindful tourism, sir. I read that complete article. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Uh, so I think we we have we have clicked the picture. Thank you so much. So I wish to see all of you tomorrow uh, for our second day of the conference for more technical tracks, keynote session by none other than uh, Michael Hall and another panel discussion. So thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Team Jami, and all the best for the remaining conference. Thank you so much. God bless the event. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.